Hi, and welcome to MUT, where you can shape and own your future. My name is Ayanda, and I'll be taking you on a virtual tour of our beautiful campus, showcasing our lecture halls and our laboratories. We'll also be speaking to lecturers, which will be giving you more insights on what you can become after your future studies, what are the prerequisite subjects that you'll need in order for you to pursue your career in the specific program which you have chosen. So, follow me as I take you through on this wonderful tour. Greetings all, my name is Notando Zikali, a third year marketing student. Marketing is a critical function of any business. Potential customers will not, would not know about the company's products or services if it does not market them. A company will not generate any sales or profits in this case. So, marketing is the business of the day. In our department, we offer a three-year full-time course. You must at least have 25 points in metric level five in English additional language, level four in maths, maths literacy and accounting. Upon completing your diploma, you can further apply to study for an advanced diploma in marketing, previously known as BTEC marketing. And as from 2022, we will be offering a postgraduate diploma in marketing. Since marketing is a diverse marketing field, you can apply for various number of careers such as a digital copywriter, a social media manager, a marketing manager, and marketing and sales consultant. We look forward to having you in our department. And since marketing is a growing industry and very exciting to work in, thank you. Greetings to anyone. My name is Edward Tato Sidibi. I'm the lecturer in the Department of Human Resource Management. I'm going to give a detailed explanation about the admission requirements for the Human Resource Management Diploma. Uh, first and foremost, I need to indicate that at the first year, we have put the first year subjects, we've got a second year subject and a third year subjects. And we also we got postgraduate courses, uh, subjects, and we've got advanced uh, subjects. Uh, at undergrad level, we've got diploma, a diploma in human resource management and then we've got a postgraduate diploma in human resource management and advanced diploma in human resource management now i'm going to explain to you the requirements or the courses that for that you need to be done to do for human resource management and then with maths and maths, maths with maths pure maths you need to have you need to have three you need to have three and total of them points must be 25. Now let me ex explain exactly how that particular process starts. First and foremost, if a person is still doing metric, we will have to apply straight to CAO. Now in case at the time we've got CAO offices, they have to apply straight there and they have to uh, submit their preliminary metric results. And once they've already submitted that, and then in the, on the particular basis, they must indicate their first choice. Thank you very much. Greetings everyone, learners at home, parents, welcome to this virtual uh, open day. I am Vuyo Kumalo, a lecturer of Public Administration and Economics. I'm here today to present to you our programs, what we offer and what can you expect when enrolling to our department. 
Now, you may be asking yourself a lot of questions as to what is this department about, what programs do they offer, as well as how to enroll as a student. The most burning question would be what are the career opportunities of which you may embark on once you have graduated. Now, seemingly we know that public administration deals with government and government operations. So, in this department, we focus on training and teaching candidates to acquire skills, competencies, even knowledge as to how best they can be satisfied or satisfy the government requirements. So in this case, we follow our regulations to ensure that all students are able then to uh, be equipped and also be able to secure job opportunities within the government space. Now, in that being said, this program then focuses on learners who come from straight from uh, high schools, even TVET colleges, and also the working individuals which are public officials within the public space. In doing so, then we ensure that all these public officials, they acquire these skills and be able to uphold what you call high ethical standards since South Africa is part of a global market of which then introduces and responds to the international standards. Now, the first question is what are the graduates or what are the programs that we do offer? We have two programs. We have an undergraduate program. We also have a postgraduate program. Now, the first undergraduate program is called Diploma in Public Management, of which then is an annual program which lasts for the entire 12 months, which is that's a year. And we offer these programs in two ways. It could either be full-time or part-time. Now, in terms of part-time, it is designed to accommodate those who are already in the working place, who are already working. Now, each and every year we have six modules. So in total, we have 22 modules of which consist of 360 SACWA credits, South African Qualifications Authority. So we have all those modules. Each year consists of six modules. Now, in the first year, you will do six modules of which then had a total of 120 credits. There are no prerequisites. All you do is to uh, have the minimum requirements and enroll into an university or into this program. Now, as you progress to your second year of study, now that's where you'll find your prerequisites. For an example, we have a number of streams, three streams of which are called elective modules. We have public human resource management, we have public finance, as well as your local government. So it's, it's, it's public finance, as well as your supply chain management, and then lastly, we have a local government, as well as economic development. Now, all these modules then, they are called prerequisites. I mean, they are called electives because you choose as an area of specialization. In the first year, you will do a module called Public Management 1, of which is a prerequisite for other modules in the second year of study. For an example, to do your Public Management 2, you must have passed with Public Management 1 at level 1. So the other modules such as your public resource management are also a prerequisite to do your public finance as well as supply chain management as well as your public human resource management of which we offer as the, the streams. With all that, with all that being said, you need also to progress to your third level of study. And even if you proceed to the level of study the third year, that means then you also have other prerequisites. I've mentioned public human resource management. I've mentioned public finance and supply chain. I've mentioned local government. Now, these are prerequisites for your third year because you have chosen a stream of which you go through up until you finish your third year. Then in third year, we have a module called work integrated learning of which is commonly known as an in-service training where all third year students are subjected to this experiential learning where they do this in serve for a period of three months now in service training is mandatory for graduation you cannot graduate without have been conducting or have been exposed to an experiential learning then you may ask yourself as to how then should i enroll or how can i enroll into this uh, program for an example firstly understanding that we have a diversity of programs or a diversity of backgrounds it means then we have a, a set of tutorials that assist students to acquire more knowledge and also assist them in understanding modules and be able to articulate and apply what they have studied there's a number of um, there's a number of skills of which you can acquire computer skills there's a number of skills such as your time memory skills even your academic writing as well you can off you get offered within this program now to enroll you need these minimum requirements firstly you have your national senior certificate of which is commonly known as your mature certificate you need to have 25 points 
minimum of 25 points excluding life orientation now we are not promoting you to fail lo no you need to pass lo in order for you to accumulate your points but it is excluded in terms of these minimum points you also need to have your english your english should be level three it should be level three it means if it's your home language it should be level three then if it's your first additional language it should be your level four therefore all applicants then of which do not meet these requirements they will be subjected to what we call an rpl that is your recognition of prior learning it means if you're already placed already working in a, in a working environment you get accredited or granted because of your competences of which you have acquired in the working space the next program that we have it's called advanced diploma in public management which then aims at facilitating and capacitating students to have or acquire what you call advanced skills knowledge as well as competences within the public sector now it is offered within a period of one year and a maximum of two years upon your registration this qualification also consists of six modules of which amount to a total of 120 sakwa credit how then do you enroll into this program you must have a minimum requirement of a national diploma in public management or a diploma in public management or any other equivalent of which then speaks to public management or public administration. Now candidates, they, they must then obtain 60% aggregates from all of their exit level modules, meaning from your third year, then you must calculate all the modules of which you have passed and then it must give you above 60% or even above 60%. Also, the RPL also applies for those who are already in a working environment, already working, but they can't meet the minimum requirement. For further more information, you can go to MUT website, where then you can download our prospectus under the Faculty of Maven Sciences. Then the burning question may be, where will I be employed? What are the career opportunities of which you might you know, embark on once you've graduated from these two or even one of these programs? It is said then that this qualification will open doors for you could it be in government government departments state departments it could be in state owned enterprises it could be even private sector organization or even your non governmental organization not commonly known as your ngos so you'll be employed in any of these environments it could be transnet could be sars could be police services it could be any other state owned or any other state organization now, remember I spoke about the public human resource management, I spoke about public finance and supply chain management, I also spoke about local government management. So these are the, some type of uh, job opposition of which you may uh, fill in once you've done these programs with us. Your public resource management administrator or you could be a manager where you'll be equipped more as to how to recruit how to maintain, how to retain, how to train, and how to improve you know, employer or employees' capability within an organization. You could either be a team in, in a supply chain management. You could be a supply chain practitioner. Could it be whether in procurement, logistics, management. You could be in risk management or even asset disposal. So it will be equipped with skills of which will allow you then to occupy those positions. Could be in an organization of a government, state-owned or any other organization of which you may come across. You can either work at a municipality, being a municipal, or a municipal officer, municipal official and so forth because we have a module or we have a stream called local government management. So you get equipped to work in any local government of which or you can embark on. You can also be a project manager where you'll be uh, equipped with skills and competences as to how to plan for projects, how to execute projects, how to control and so forth. So that's how we'll, you will be assisted then to deliver these services to the public through projects as well as programs. You can be an admin assistant working in an office. Remember, we spoke about computer skills. You get all these skills in our program, then you'll be able to work in such environments. Budget analysis. You can also work there. Remember, government deals with budgets when delivering these good and services. So you need to budget for your organization, for your department. You will be equipped with all of those uh, skills and competencies. Now, what I want to tell you before I leave, make sure that you work hard, you score good points. Make sure you apply on time to avoid late application because that might jeopardize or that might prolong your admission to this university and to a public administration. So all that being said, I hope this presentation will assist you to make an informed decision with the choice and your career path as well. I thank you. Welcome, welcome. This is the Department of Office Management and Technology. 
I am Mr. Shangase, one of the academic staff members from the department. I'm here to introduce the course, which is called Office Management and Technology. We are offering two programs in this program, a Diploma in Office Management and Technology, which is NQF Level 6, and Advanced Diploma in Office Management and Technology, which is NQF Level 7. I will start by explaining more in terms of admission requirements for our program. Admission requirements for the Diploma in Office Management and Technology um, is English Home Language 3 and or English First Additional Language 4. If you have matriculated with an old metric certificate, you should have an English Higher Grade E or an English Higher Grade D and any other commercial subjects. If you have uh, typing or computer studies, you, that will be added as an added advantage. The other run points that you should have, you should have 25 points and above. Moving on to the structure of our program, the Diploma in Office Management and Technology, it's offered over a period of three years. Once you have completed our course, you, there are many career opportunities. There is a stigmatized perception that um, if you study our course, you can become a secretary. Yes, I agree, you can be a secretary, but there's a lot of careers that you can be exposed to. Uh, ask yourself, each and every organization need an administration section in order for it to operate. Not only secretaries, there's a lot of administrators that are being required in industries. So you can, once you have completed our course, you can be an office manager, personal assistant, administrative officer, office administrator or secretary, administrative clerk, switchboard and reception operator, events manager, events coordinators, filing stock clerks, administrative assistants, project facilitators, project managers. Also, you can become a lecturer one day. If you study vertically going up, up until post-grad master's program, you stand a good chance to become a lecturer one day. In our department, we have 90% of, of our staff members who did this course. I'm one of them who did this course. There's a lot of other colleagues who actually did this similar course. We will be delighted to, to welcome you next year to come and study with us. As one of our mottos in the department, we are training office professionals uh, to be trendsetting and competent office professionals to manage the 21st century offices. We'll be delighted to welcome to start with us, possibly next year. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. My name is Kulile Mate. Welcome to the Department of Accounting. Department of Accounting is one of the biggest department at MUT. Has we offered five uh, undergraduate programs and two postgraduate programs. Undergraduate programs that we have, we have diploma in accounting, three year program, and diploma in accounting for a program known as ECP. The third program that we have, Diploma in Cost and Management Accounting. The fourth program we have, Diploma in Public Finance and Accounting. And we also have Diploma in Local Government and Finance. The entry requirements for our undergraduate programs are the same. I will start with Diploma in Accounting. I will start with the candidates who have a National Senior Certificate. For candidates who have a National Senior Certificate or Grade 12, they need a minimum of 25 points. Plus, Accounting Level 4, English First additional language level five or English home language level four and mathematics level three 
if you don't have mathematics we need mathematics mathematics literacy uh, level six for candidates who have ncv ncv we need a applied accounting 50 and also we need mathematics 50 we need english 50. we also take candidates who are, who are studying at fet for candidates who have n6 they must we need uh, candidates who have completed n6 those candidates must pass national i mean they must pass accounting with 50 cost and management accounting 50 and they must also pass taxation 50. all right the courses that we offered in our programs we have a financial accounting in financial accounting you will be required to prepare financial statements for companies private companies and public companies we also have cost and management accounting in cost and management accounting it deals about manufacturing so under cost and management you are required to prepare ledger accounts for manufacturing companies and we also have auditing in auditing a candidate will be required to audit financial statements of public companies and private private companies we also have taxation taxation of course you will be required to calculate VAT for small business for small businesses and individual individuals like employee tax and company tax right the prerequisites at level one there are no prerequisites uh, possible career opportunities after completing your qualification you can be a chartered accountant or a finance officer or payroll officer or you can be an internal auditor and you can even start your own business be an entrepreneur because in our courses we teach you uh, uh, business skills like preparing a business plan company registration and you will teach you also to prepare your own financial statements so and also we take uh, we teach you about management skills because if you want to start your own business you need management skills as you are going to manage people greetings my name is Dombin Zamazibogo I'm going to give you just a rundown of what the clinic offers to the students at Mamosuti University of Technology okay as the students comes in through the main door, there's a, an observation table there where they do the health checks. Okay, the sister who's sitting there will be looking at the student's cell phone to check if it, did the, it does have the recent health check. Then it confess, confirms that and then it does, she does the observations for the students, things like the blood pressure, the pulse rate, the weight and so forth according to the needs for the students. From there, she'll be moving on over to the reception desk where the student will be registered and then she'll be directed according to the needs that she came for to the clinic for example okay things that we offer we treat as part of the, the curative uh, health now we treat illnesses things like bronchitis like stis 
many things depending on what the person person came for. We also give or do emergencies or emergency care things that maybe their injuries or the person faints or the person needs in for in treatment like the, the the prevention to get HIV or to be transmitted with HIV. For example, a person has been exposed to to unprotected sex. So within 72 hours, that person needs to get certain forms of ARVs. It's part of ARVs that we call the PEP. We've got the doctor that is on site. It's an occupational doctor, but she does as well offer the disability management for our students that need, to, that need uh, management, that have, that have got disabilities. Okay. And then we offer HIV counseling where we do pre-counseling and post-counseling. Then, so we do, we, we prepare a person, we counsel a person before the test, do the test, and then after the test, we do, whether the person is negative or positive, we still do the post-test counseling. Because at the end of the day, the person we might need to, okay, we'll need to come back after three, so let's say the person tested negative. After three months, needs to come back for follow-up test. If the person is positive, we do the confirmatory test, and then we take the bloods and send them the baseline bloods and send them to the lab so that they get the, the, the results and come back. Then we refer that person to the hospital or to the, there's an NGO that we work with so that the person will get managed there because we don't have the arts, the antiretroviral drugs, we don't have the med mammals which is yet. Or other than that, then the health education that we do, as you can see, the different pamphlets. So the person, as it comes, the we do a lot of health education, either on one-on-one -on -one basis or in different cases. And again, there are health campaigns that you find that have been offered by the clinic. Health education different in different places. And for example, if we had, you find that there are HIV in, in its testing days. For example, there are TB days or the breast cancer awareness days. All those things are offered in terms of by the health promoter from the the clinic. My name is Dutsuko Mshongo and I am a writing practitioner here at the university's writing center. We offer one-on-one -on -one support for students who are looking for assistance with their writing. As you know, that when you make the transition from high school towards university, the writing is a bit different and it requires more skills. So we offer one-on-one -on -one support where you will walk into the writing center and you will find a writing assistant or a writing practitioner that is ready to help you. We are open on Mondays from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. And on Fridays, we open from 8 in the morning to 1 p.m. We look forward to seeing you at MUT and at our writing center. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a great tour, don't you think? Now that you've seen our beautiful laboratories, our beautiful lecture halls, our beautiful student accommodation, our sporting codes, there are procedures in which you need to follow in order for you to become an MUT student. In order for you to become an MUT student, please don't forget to apply through CAO. Looking forward to seeing you soon.